whenever you have an Israel experience, uh, it's really unique for many different reasons. But going on a JFNA mission is truly a unique experience. Why is that? You know, I think they have so much experience in taking groups and, and finding different ways of seeing Israel. It's not just about Jerusalem on Shabbat, which is always included and, and always a special experience. But I've been rappelling down canyon walls. I've been uh, canoeing down the Jordan River. I've been on the border with Lebanon, the border with Syria. I've been up on uh, Mount Hermon, uh, swimming in different areas, on the Dead Sea. And you're always getting a different experience with JFNA that you may not be able to get with other places. Yeah, you'll see the big cities and the, and the the major um, attractions, you know, as you might want to say. But with JFNA, they just have a different spin on it. They really get guides that I think are top notch. They they don't use just your average guides. They use the top echelon of guides. And I think anybody that's been to Israel, when you're with one of those guides, a JFNA guide, you get an experience. You come back saying, "Wow, I get it. I really learned. It wasn't just an experience. It wasn't just a vacation. It wasn't just meeting friends. I really came away with a, an education and a better understanding of who I am, what my people are, where we came from, and where we have an opportunity to go to. Let's talk a little bit about leadership because that's a critical part uh, of a mission. Um, you, you mentioned that you're not just, it's not just a tour guide. It's not just a tour experience. It's really building community and leadership. How does that happen? You know, I think the leadership, there's always, if you ask anybody that's been on missions to Israel, there's always that aha moment where you say, you know what, I want to be more involved. I want to make a difference in the Jewish world. I want to make a difference for the Jewish people. And, you know, whether it's meeting the Ethiopian uh, Olim that have just recently come to Israel, or whether it's working with a, a teen group, you know, of, you know, in a more underprivileged area, and wanting to make a difference in that community, you might come back to the States and say, you know what, I want to make a difference and I want to lead. I don't want to just be a donor. Everybody can be a donor, but to give your time and your money, that's something special. And having other people follow you and get your experience across to them and make them feel, hey, you know what? Jimmy was there. Jimmy's talking about it. Make them feel and appreciate what you saw. And that's leadership. That's really getting other people to follow you, getting other people to give, getting other people to learn and want to go to Israel and see what you saw and get involved. And being part of a network is also a wonderful way to connect and, and learn uh, resources and being able to recruit. These are all critical parts in, in developing a, a mission. Um, what do you say to the, the communities that are looking to, to start uh, with a mission or looking to, or thinking about expanding their uh, opportunities uh, in Israel and abroad? Well, I think the main thing that you have to look at is how do you create passion in your community and from individuals to want to make a difference and to want to lead in your community? And through missions, that's if you ask most people who are leaders in the Jewish, organized Jewish community, whether it's JFNA or another organization, Usually that passion came from a mission or that aha moment, and they've come back from that mission or that aha moment and, and said, I want to make a difference. And the other thing that's unique is you get other ideas from other people. When you meet people from different communities, I, I live in Baltimore. I have friends in New York, Cincinnati, L.A., Jacksonville, uh, Atlanta. It goes on and on and on around the country. People that I've been on missions with, that we've had that ex when, you, when you've had that experience with other people, you've had that bonding experience, and it really expands your world, your personal world and your Jewish world. And now you have people who say, hey, didn't you guys go on that mission? I want to lead some people on a mission like that, something that's really exciting, whether it's a wine tasting mission uh, to the Galilee or whether it's a, a trip to a lot or whether it's something to Ashkelon, which is our sister city in Baltimore. You know, these are the kind of things that you really build through those connections around the country. You get different ideas and different um, you know, a different mm -hmm. bonding and, and really an experience. Can you share with us your aha moment? I'd say my aha moment, the f I'm 50, and the first time I went to Israel, I was 37. And, um, you know, I'd always been a very passionate Zionist, but had never been to Israel, which I'm, uh, and I finally got there. And I'll never forget being in the David Citadel Hotel. It was an exhausting day. I didn't sleep on the plane. And I opened the... Uh, the curtains of my room and there was the city of Jerusalem and um, you know tears rolled down my face because I was finally there and you know being there and you know someplace I had heard about and talked about and saw on TV but never really experienced it um, 
there's something about it. You just feel connection to the land, and you feel connection to the people the more you're there. And I've been back to Israel 14 times since then, and I have friends that I converse with all the time. And, um, in fact, I'm actually partners with somebody, an Israeli, in an Israeli business. Um, and it's really been a great part of my life, and it's been uh, an exciting part of my life.